We don't need to disagree less. We need to disagree better and actually, in a lot of cases, to disagree more. That's actually what brings people together. When I talk to married couples, for example, you find that the, the coldest marriages never fight. Now, yeah. the marriages that fall apart, they fight like crazy, but they don't know how to fight is the way that that works. And so I work with couples all the time on how to fight and actually how to do that. And a lot of people will say, it's kind of interesting, married couples will say, you know what, after we, have, we haven't fought for a long time, you know, it's been weeks and weeks we haven't seen each other, we have a big argument, and then for some reason we always have sex afterward. It's like, it's not, it's not makeup sex. That's actually not right. A fight is the most intimate thing that you that you have because you actually said something that you believe that you've been not saying. And, and when somebody's super honest with you and you're being super honest, you're just completely in love, even if you're angry. That's the way that that works. And that's what we have to keep in mind, that conflict can be incredibly healthy if we know the rules. I also want to add to that, and that's an, an incredible point. And when, to go back to a point that I was discussing about my, my dad's family and my mom's family, both of the, the grandparents stayed married until there was a, a death. And you could look at that and think they hated each other. They should have been divorced a long time ago. Or you can look at that saying they did what it took to stay married for that family for all those years. So you could say, and it depends on observation and a worldview, but learning to fight, learning to stay together, right? And, and that, that fighting plays an intimate role in that relationship and keeping those things together. Yeah, right. I mean, nobody knows what's going on inside a, an individual couple, to be sure. Only the couple knows that. And you find out things about people after the fact, et cetera. You're always kind of surprised about that. But, you know, when we say that these older couples, the reason that they, that they stay together is because of the social you know, strictures against divorce. That's not usually true. The number one reason is that they were highly complimentary to each other because they were probably set up by a loved one who thought they might make a kind of a good match based on their complementarity and their difference. And the second is because it was really, really inconvenient to split up, they learned how to have conflict. They just actually learned the rules of the road is what came down to. Now, when I'm working with couples, the number one thing that I work on is I listen to them having an argument. And all the couples that are really, really struggling, it's always me and you and I and you, and they're always talking about these personal pronouns, either in the first and second person, always move to the we and us pronouns. And, and it's going to change the way you think and change the way you fight, it turns out. Because then you don't say, you hurt my feelings. You say, we had an argument and that really hurt me. We had an argument that really hurt me. You're taking responsibility and you're defining the problem as a project for the two of you to solve. And so when you actually solve it, you've made progress together. It's like, it's like your, your, your fights become projects just because of the pronouns that you use. It's so critically important. And couples that always use we and us, always use we and us, they're a team and they don't split up is basically what you find. So that's, you know, uh, idea number one. Well, not only you're staying married together, you're growing together because if you had gotten married kind of early in life in your, in your twenties, you haven't really even discovered who you are, let alone your significant other. And that process, if you're able to be able to do that th together only lends itself to building, constructing a North star between you and your partner and working towards that together. This is actually one of the reasons that, that the, the marriages, they tend to do better when they're startups than when they're mergers, you know, to use the industrial <laughs> language. And, and so it. that's a good one. So people are like, you know, no, I got to get through law school and I need to get my career down and, da, 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 and then I'll think about marriage. That's the wrong order. Startups where people it's like, we got nothing, we got nothing together. So, you know, I fell in love with my, my wife when I was 24 years old and man, I was like a starving musician in those days all the way through my 20s i had hair like you i mean it was um, that's why she <laughs> fell in love with me by the way and and we you know we got married we were poor we were we had big ideas we had dreams and we learned how to live together so that you know people change over the course of their life couples that are, are startups they tend to change together mergers it's harder and don't get me started on on hostile takeovers and acquisitions those those are really the, <laughs> you can tell i teach you to business school <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, listen, a marriage basically is a business arrangement the way it is presented on paper. So <laughs> let's be honest there. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, the mergers, are the, I mean, the, the mergers are the ones with the prenups, by the way. You know, no startups have prenups. I mean, you, I mean, 
it, it just you don't Hence think about why there's hostile the takeovers. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that's right. 